Good evening, everyone. Um, we haven't started yet. We're just going to wait a couple of minutes for a few more students to log in. Um, so we'll start at about five past. Thanks. Okay, Tracy, I think um, it's five past now. We could probably just give it a go. Right, good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Tracy Salter Willis. I am Head of Academics for Crawford International. And it is my utter, utter pleasure tonight to welcome Global Education to the connection and partnership with Crawford International and to welcome you on board as well in understanding what this partnership means. Now, just a little bit of background around the, um, the setting of this conversation. Um, as Crawford International, we have defined our new academic pillars and our new academic offering. And one of the pillars um, refers to 
learning being locally and globally relevant and everything that we're doing is readiness for both the local stage and the global stage. What we weren't aware of at the time is how many opportunities there were for our students to actually go and study overseas. And so we engaged with global education themselves and, and found out what it is they do and how it is that they access close on 400 universities across the world from the States to Europe, to the UK, to Australia, to New Zealand and beyond. And in having this discussion, we realized that one of our taglines being a world of opportunities was highly, highly relevant to what global education offers us in partnering and um, supporting our students in looking for opportunities to study overseas. Now, before we even engage in all of this, can I make it very clear that it's this, the aim of this is not to be sending our people offshore and not wanting them to return. And Nico will talk to his journey going over and coming back. It is the fact that there are phenomenal opportunities to study across the world and that we don't need to limit ourselves to what is on offer in South Africa alone. So through this conversation tonight, Nico is going to explain to you um, what it is, what we need, what it looks like so that we actually understand because there was no doubt from an academic front and from a Crawford head office front that we actually do not know all the information. We do not understand the full picture. And that is what Global is going to provide us. Um, before we move into the conversation um, and the world of opportunities, one of the big things you need to know that in our partnership with Global, when you are looking to, to study overseas and to opportunities for the career path you're looking for, there is no cost to this. So I think put that one on the table before we even begin, that this is not going to cost you anything as far as the consultation, as far as the supporting application. Um, obviously, there is a cost for the studying, so I'm not, I'm not taking that one away. But We get the application form. It is actually visas, accommodation, and connections to the university. Can I also add that in all our dealings with global education as, as a group and as a, um, a service provider, that they are endorsed by every university that is on the list that um, they provide to us. Um, and uh, they, they then work closely with a dedicated team at every one of these universities. Just as an FYI, while we're having a conversation directly with Nico tonight, who represents Global Ed, um, all our high schools are well aware of this partnership. All our high schools have a copy of the list of universities. All the counselors at our high schools, as well as the principals and deputies, have been through a training session. So if there is anything this evening that you you want to find out more about, you have got avenues within your school and across your campus, as well as um, the opportunity to contact NICO and Global Ed as well. Just as far as interaction goes, what we would appreciate is allowing NICO the opportunity to present the big picture of how Global Ed allows us a world of opportunities with close on 400 universities. There is a chat function. Um, his brother George is online as well, and they will support and manage the chat. And then at the end, for you to raise your hands and ask questions towards the end. So perhaps what you can do is jot down your questions as we work through all, all the avenues and understandings. And then towards the end, Nico will um, happily answer all your questions. So, Nika from, from Crawford International, welcome on board. Excited to have the and with the group. And uh, we look forward to hearing the whole story. And I can see just on my screen that we've got over 205 families online right now. And I'm sure they're equally excited to understand what it is they can do to actually go and speak beyond and have the experience beyond our borders. Um, awesome. Thanks, Tracy. I, I think we lost you a little bit there at the end. Um, but again, just want to say thank you for welcoming not just myself, but the whole global education team to be part of 
uh, Crawford International, and we're very excited to um, obviously work with you guys and, and to assist uh, your students to study abroad, if that's what their dream is. Um, just, just some background information. We have actually helped quite a number of, of students from Crawford over the years. Um, so we're quite excited to, to officially be a partner and, and to, to be the point of, of contact for all of your students across all the schools in terms of studying overseas. Um, again, just to reiterate what, um, what Tracy said, if there are any questions that you have during the presentation, um, I'd really appreciate it if you could just pop them into the Q&A section of, of the Zoom chat, uh, which you'll see on your side. Um, or you can hang on to them until the end of the presentation and then pop them in there. And what we'll do is we'll have a little um, question and answer session at the end if there's anything that um, I haven't particularly touched on or something that you want more information on. Um, I know there's also a chat feature, but um, we might get some questions lost in that chat feature. So if you can keep everything in the Q&A section, that'll be ideal because we can also then print that out at a later stage um, and have that uh, given across to the schools for any any um, parents who may have missed this uh, this consultation or this this presentation. Sorry. Um, so let's get into this. Um, what does global education do, and uh, and why did we we partner together? Basically, um, a little bit about us, and and I will go a bit in depth as we go through the presentation. But um, how it works with Global is we are directly contracted to about four hundred universities worldwide. Um, and what that means is we are the local representatives for those universities. Um, we basically, um, sorry, there's a question that just popped up there. We, we basically the local universities for the uh, local admissions team for these universities where we process the applications on their behalf. But before we get to the application side of things, we also vet students to make sure that they are the right type of student for these universities, that they meet certain minimum requirements for those universities in order to put in an application. So we are the team on the ground that um, basically says to our teams at the universities, this is a genuine student. This is someone that's um, worth your time investing in and, and making an offer to. Um, because of this relationship that we have, the universities are um, very open to students that come through us. The application process is a lot smoother, a lot faster because we have teams that we deal with at the universities, which makes the process um, a lot easier for the student because what you have to do from your end is, is a lot less work. Um, Global does all of it for you. So as you can see on the screen, there's a list of things that we offer, but I'm just gonna talk you through the process as a student or as a parent coming to see us. When you book a consultation with, with someone at Global Education, how the process works is ideally, you would send an email to us and say, Hi, Nick, or Fernanda, or Panos, or Miguel, or Ashley, whoever it is that you're dealing with. I'm interested, or my daughter or son is interested in studying finance, or um, fine art, or law in the UK or in America. Please, could you give me a list of universities that you represent that offer these programs? And what our, consul what our counselors will do before that consultation is actually generate a list from the 400 universities that we represent Put, them, put that list together of which universities offer the program in that country, or even break it down to city if that's what you want, and, and really go into detail on which are the better universities in terms of employability, in terms of lifestyle. We break it down according to what the student wants. And um, we tailor that consultation for the student and for the parents so they understand um, exactly what it is that they're looking for and, and getting all that information right at the offset so they know okay, when we're ready to apply, they've already got the background information on the universities and know roughly what the universities are looking for in terms of marks at matric in order to apply. And they also go through the entire process from application right through to getting your visa and getting on a plane and going. So that's where the free consultation process starts. The fast track application side of things is because we have the local, um, what we have that connection a signed agreement between the universities and ourselves. We have a very uh, localized department at the universities that we work with, which creates a, turn a faster turnaround time. If you applied on your own through international admissions, there's about 60, depending on the university, 60 to 70 people that work with international admissions. And every time you email, you'll get a different person that comes back and answers you. We have a very specific team, a dedicated team that we, we deal with. 
And because of that team, we can also fight cases. So we've had situations before where a student has applied on their own and received a rejection and sort of left it at that thinking, oh, well, my marks weren't good enough. And, um, you know, I'll just have to apply somewhere else or just study locally because I'm not going to get in. Whereas we've had situations where a student has applied to university with exactly the same grades as a student from the year before, but this time around was rejected, maybe because it's a new case officer that's just started and doesn't know the South African system. And what we can do is go to that team and say, look, previously accepted another student with the similar grades. Um, I think you've made a mistake here. And we've actually had those types of decisions overturned. So that's what, that's where the fast tracking of applications comes in and, and, and the teams that we deal with. That's the type of thing that we can do for our students with the universities that we work with. Applying for visas, we have dedicated a, a visa team. Jess and Maria um, are our senior visa officers and, and they oversee all of our visa applications. I do have the final approval on those um, just to make sure that obviously everything is done correctly and submitted correctly. And uh, basically what happens with our visa process is um, we give the students a checklist, depending on which country they're going to, of what documents are required. We, we counsel you before we get to that visa side of things, because um, not all parents want to use us. They have travel agents or they want to do it themselves because they're familiar with the process um, of traveling. We don't recommend this because the student visa is different, but there are instances where parents or students would like to do it on their own and we counsel uh, to give you all the information so that you have everything in case you want to do it yourself um, but students that do the process through us and follow our guidelines don't get visa rejections um, so we have a hundred percent track record with our students um, applying for their visas student accommodation this is part of the application process once a student has a conditional offer or an unconditional offer. And I'll talk you through those two different stages when we get further on in the presentation. But um, you can apply for accommodation with the student ID number. We don't get involved in the initial application side of it because obviously students must pick what they want and, and be comfortable with the accommodation choice that they've picked. But we do follow up and make sure that that accommodation is given to the student or is at least offered something very similar. UCAS and IELTS Center, I'll get into detail with that when we move on a bit, a bit further. And documentation assistance, that's again part of the whole application process. We tell you what's required at what stage. So if there is any additional information that you do need or that the university is asking for, we will help you throughout that entire process. So you're never at a point where your university is asking for a document and you have no idea what that document is. So let's go into slide. Um, so here's just a, a, a brief overview of some of the universities that we're contracted to. Um, all your counselors at school uh, have our updated list. Um, and Tracy is probably going to laugh in the background um, when I say that that list gets updated all the time. I think we sent before this presentation, we probably sent five or six edits to, to Tracy and, and the team at, at Crawford with new universities that we've just acquired and, and partner up with. So we're always looking to partner up with more universities, but there's particular processes that we go through and, and requirements that we need for our international students in order to, to partner up with them. But this is just a, an example of some of the universities that we work with and universities that you can apply directly to. Um, so studying in the UK, the process with the United Kingdom is you apply through what's called the UCAS Centre. Now we are a registered UCAS center. So the benefit to this and this partnership with Crawford is that Crawford doesn't have to create a UCAS center for each school. Um, all the Crawford students who want to take advantage of applying through us can go through our UCAS center. We have um, basically an overview of all the applications through our center. So the great thing is with UCAS, um, if you make a mistake, if you've uh, done something incorrectly, we can oversee that and get back to you immediately and sort that out as soon as possible. Um, I am the uh, final approval at the UCAS Center. So even though you would be working with one of our counselors and they would pre-approve your application, it still has to come to me for a final approval before it gets submitted. And the great thing about that is if you applied on your own through UCAS, for example, once you submit the application, that's it. There's nothing that you can do to sort of alter it or change what you've done and, and you only get one UCAS application submission a year. So 
going through a center is great because we have the final approval and we can actually bring that application back if there is a mistake on it. Um, an IELTS center, that's got to do with English testing. Um, it's not often that a student is required to do that, but if you do a bridging course, it is required for visa purposes and we're an IELTS center. So we can help you book that test and, and make the process a lot smoother for you. So that's applying in the UK. It's all done through the UCAS center. We're a UCAS uh, a center ourselves, so we can help you through that entire process. Uh, the biggest part of this is that you have to write a personal statement on why you want to um, study the uh, particular degree that you want to study. And being a UCAS center, we go for training with UCAS. Um, or Pre-COVID, we would go once a year at least, um, but now we do the training online with them. And we, we help write the personal statement. So we make sure that um, you know, your personal statement is as strong as possible. And then we also assist your teachers with the academic references which go along with your application so that you're, you get a holistic approach to your UCAS application and that your application is as strong as possible when applying to um, all the different UK universities. Um, and again, we will, depending on which country you want to apply to and which counselor you, uh, uh, whoever's overseeing your application through Global, they will guide you through every single step of UCAS um, and we have a guide that takes you through each step as well. Studying in Australia, the, the, the process is slightly different with Australian universities. They're done through an online system called Study Link or direct application through the agent portals. And, and we have access to all of those universities minus, I think there's two Australian universities or three Australian universities that we don't work with at the moment. Um, but that process is very quick, very easy. Um, we would give you a paper application to fill in along with the documents uh, checklist that we require. You would give that back to us and we submit it straight through our portal directly to the universities and the turnaround time is, is quite fast with Australia. Uh, we usually get an answer within 20 working days um, and students have offers based on that. Uh, one of the great things with Australia that we, we have done in order to help students because myself and my brother, we both studied in Australia and what, one of the things that we found was the great thing about Australia is you get a, a, a two-year post-study work visa when you finish your studies. The UK has just introduced that, so we're also looking to do this in, in the UK. But currently in Australia, we have this sort of pretty, pretty much uh, mapped out. And, and what that means is as long as you've done a minimum of two years of study in Australia, you qualify to work in Australia for two years. Um, and, and obviously, if you want to stay longer, depending on if the company wants to keep you, you can do that as well. And, and we work with Direct Migration, which is a company in Australia based in Sydney. Um, they actually write a lot of the legislation um, for immigration and, and you know, post-study work visas and, and work visas in general. And basically what we do with them is when students have finished their studies and want to qualify or apply for this, they can go directly to Direct Migration and they will assist with that whole process. Being experts, we thought it would be ideal to assist students in that final step if they do want to stay on and take advantage of that. Studying in the States, as you know, um, a lot of people, uh, or a lot of the information is that you require SATs to study in America. Because of our um, relationship and, 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 and context with the universities and agreements, and, and the fact that we vet students on their behalf and we know what to look for in terms of averages for specific degrees, our universities on that list do not require SATs to study. So what that means is all of our American universities you can apply to with your metric results. You don't need to do any additional testing. And this process is exactly the same as the Australian process, directly through our agent portals, straight to the universities. It's great because the process is fast um, and you don't have to do the common app, which is the American version of uh, UCAS. And that's got to do with Ivy League universities. Um, and I'm not going to get too much into Ivy League universities, but we do have a subdivision um, that does assist with Ivy Leagues. But at undergraduate level, to be totally honest with you, um, the application side of things is, is very difficult. Uh, each university gets over 200,000 applications uh, at undergraduate level, and it's all academic based. So you do require SATs for the Ivy League universities, and the highest SAT score is going to get you in. But all the other universities that we represent that aren't Ivy Leagues will take you on your essay, uh, will take you on your matric. You don't have to do any additional testing and our counselors will guide you through what marks you need to have at matric in order to qualify for entry. 
So pathway programs is, is actually one of, um, it's, it's my passion uh, within the company. And um, to be totally honest, I think quite a lot of our counselors will also tell you that it's, um, you know, their passion for helping students. And the reason behind this is because it, this is where your world of opportunity lies. This is for students who, um, you know, don't, aren't the, the most academic or don't really enjoy the school scene or the school environment and, and aren't thriving academically. Uh, or for the students who uh, just succumb to academic pressure during the matric uh, exams and don't do as well as they should have and, and, and barely, you know, pass, um, pass their matric results. And, and the reason this is so great is because these programs allow you, if you want to be a doctor, you can still be a doctor. If you want to be an engineer, you can still be an engineer. If you didn't take the right subjects in grade nine, grade 10, um, or you thought, actually, I don't, you know, I want to be a, a graphic designer. And then later on, you, you know, you feel like, actually, I, I want to be a doctor. I want to go into health sciences, but you don't have those subjects. These pathway programs are your solution. And how they work is each one of these is a different uh, company and they are in partnership with a lot of our universities and how they work is they offer foundation programs, bridging programs um, that cater to the degree that you want to go into. So for example, if you want to be a doctor, but you haven't taken biology and physical science, or you aren't a straight A student, you can apply for a foundation purely based on just passing the trick. As long as you pass matric, you can apply for these programs. You would go into the Health Science Foundation. And as long as you pass with a minimum of 65% in your foundation year, you're then guaranteed your place at university for the degree of your, your choice. So, for example, if you did the Health Science and you wanted to progress into medicine, you can do that. As long as you pass your foundation with the 65%, you can then obviously progress into your medical degree. The great thing about this program is it's done on the university campus. Most of these are done on the university campus. You are in smaller classrooms of about 25 students instead of massive lecture theaters of 400. You get one-on-one -on -one time with your academic supervisors. You um, have an, sorry, one-on-one -on -one time with your lecturers. You have an academic supervisor who basically monitors you throughout that foundation year to make sure that you are on track and obviously studying and doing all the right things in order to progress. You also have a career supervisor who sort of checks in with you every now and again to make sure that you, know, you still wanna go down a certain path. And if you don't want to, let's say, go into medicine, you can still use that health foundation program to go into a number of different um, degrees such as pharmaceuticals or biomedical science or just a general BSc. So, that this foundation program is great because it, it opens up a lot of doors for students not who are not just academic but who may have picked the wrong subjects or who just don't thrive in the school environment. This opens up your world of opportunity. You can apply to any university for any degree um, through this pathway program. The only sticking point would be is if you did a foundation at uh, Into, for example, uh, you did the foundation at Into Exeter. Uh, for let's say medicine, you then have to progress to Exeter University for your medical degree. So wherever you do your foundation program is the university that will be the same university that you progress to. Um, the nice thing about this program, and I know Tracy would be uh, over my shoulder if, if, um, if we were together, would be to tell you the start dates for these. There's multiple start dates. There's three a year. So for example, if you're studying in the UK or the States, there's a January and May intake. So that covers the you can enter at either of those points, depending on what passport you have. Um, and we will guide you again through this, this process because you can technically do the foundation program in those, in those start dates up until August of the, of the same year and then go straight into your first year of university in September. So that gap period that you would normally have, uh, you could use for a foundation year so that you're not losing any time. And also if you're not academic, you can still go in that period and then still start at first year university with everyone else in September. Um, so there's three intakes a year for the foundation. You've got January, you've got May, and then you've got your normal intake, which is September. So this is something that we are very passionate about um, because this is what opens up uh, doors to not just the academic students, but any student who really wants to be an engineer, a doctor, a lawyer, um, an accountant, 
or a graphic designer who, and they didn't take the right subjects, they just didn't pass, um, you can take these programs and, and progress. Change over. So here's an example of some of the students that we sent last year. Um, the reason we're bringing it up here is to show you that not only did they get into the university to a university overseas, but you can also see a number of the universities that they applied to and they received offers from all of them. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because during that consultation process, when we find out what you wanna study and which country you wanna study it, we will tell you which based off of your, your term two results or your term one results, we will tell you what you need to get in order to qualify to apply to these universities for direct entry. We will tell you, you need to have, you know, a 65% overall and you need to have you know, good marks in mathematics or good marks in, in physical science. Uh, it will tell you that depending on the degree that you want so that you have a good idea of what's required before you even start the application process. Um, so your hardest part would obviously be getting those results, but you, your actual hardest part in this whole application process is picking the university's offer that you want because you're going to end up with, you know, so many offers like most of these students here. Um, and that's, that's honestly where we really try and, and make this process and tell parents and, this, and their, their children to go away and really think about the universities that we've given you to look at. Because when you do receive your offers it's, and you have offers from multiple universities, it's difficult if you haven't done your research and looked at the universities as, as a whole on which one to pick. So that's, this, this is just to give you an example of where some of these students applied and where they've actually gone. Um, and if you go into our Instagram page, there's actually a lot more uh, of these success stories that, that, are, that are on there. Uh, our virtual expo. Um, this is something that we used to do in person. I'm sure some of you uh, at the Lucia Crawford in Durban would have, uh, would have seen. Um, we, we do them uh, every year prior to COVID. We used to be hosted by the Lucia Crawford and we bring out about 50 well, anywhere from 30 to 50 universities for you to actually come and talk to them and, and get one-on-one -on -one time. We've moved this now to a virtual webinar, which will be happening in the middle of August till the end of September. Um, and we will obviously send all those dates out to not just the Crawford students, but also to the parents. And I think Tracy will also send a mailer out um, to all the parents just to keep you updated with, with this. But basically what this virtual event is, is to give you an opportunity to hear from my universities directly and to give you a chance to ask questions. So like what I'm doing now, presenting to you about global education, the university would be presenting to you about what they have to offer. And then when we get to the end of the presentation, we have a Q&A session, like what we're gonna have at the end of this, where you have an opportunity to ask questions directly to the university rep and um, to find out anything else that you need um, prior to putting in an application. So the document checklist. So this is what your counselor from Global Education would uh, obviously give you once you've had the initial consultation in order to apply through us. For most students, you require all of these documents except for a detailed CV. The CV is usually for students outside of school. And it doesn't mean that you have to have been working. It just really has to account for what you've been doing since you finished school. Um, your bank statement is usually from mom and dad just to show that you are genuine students and obviously can, can afford your tuition. Um, education certificate is your term two or term three report or prelim report, whichever one you wanna to use to apply. Um, your personal statement, again, is uh, something that we will help you write. And academic references is from any teacher that you um, have a good rapport with that will write your, your reference for you. In terms of the application process, we counsel a student, we give you all the information, you come back with these documents, and then our team will process it. And what will happen from there is you have two, two uh, options. You either receive what's called a conditional offer, which most of you will receive because you wouldn't have received your final metric results because we can start this process with your term two or term three results. So what that means is with the conditional offer, the university is basically saying to you, we will accept you on the condition that your final statement of results are the same as these that you've submitted or are better. And they would say, for example, we would require you to have two sevens and three sixes or three sevens and two sixes. Um, so you will know 
prior, uh, before your matric uh, exams, what you need to achieve in order to get your place unconditionally confirmed. When you get your statement of results at the end of, um, sorry, at the beginning of January, I think it's January 3rd, when the results come out, you would email those statement of results to us and our team will change that, go to our universities to change that offer from conditional to unconditional. And basically what that means when you have an unconditional offer is you've been fully accepted by the university. And in order to secure your place, you would have to then pay a deposit to the university, which we would guide you through again. Once that deposit is paid, you have now become an official uh, student at the university, and then we can move on to your visa side of things. And we will guide you through every single step. So you, at no point will you not know what's coming next. Um, but at the same time, during the initial or, or the secondary consultation, when you're bringing us all these documents, you will know every step of the way and, and what at what step you are at. So that's the end of the presentation, everybody. Um, that's pretty much what global education does as a whole. Um, what we are hoping to achieve with, with this partnership with Craw Crawford is to just really make this process as easy and as smooth as possible for, for all of you leaning on our expertise um, because you know we've been doing this for 15 years. And if you read our blurb on, on this webinar, this is a family run business. Um, myself and my older brother, and in fact, a number of our staff have all gone through global education to study overseas. Um, I'd like to tell you a story of, of Leia, Leia Jago, who is a student that went to Lelusha Crawford. She didn't qualify for physiotherapy here in South Africa. She didn't have the grades. And um, for example, she was told to go into a commerce degree and to apply for physiotherapy after her first year. She unfortunately, um, after that first year, didn't want to continue. She didn't get accepted into physiotherapy and then dropped out of university. And what she did was um, a year later, she saw one of our adverts for the, the web, that, for the expo that we were doing at Lelusha Crawford. And she came to see us and said, look, I really want to do physiotherapy. My mom has a physiotherapy studio. Um, I want to work with her. Is there anything you can do to help us? And we managed to get her into Manchester Metropolitan University. Um, she did have to do a, a foundation program. And uh, she's finished now, qualified, working, and actually runs her mom's uh, physiotherapy in Durban. So that's the type of story that we, we love. That's the type of thing that we want to do. Um, Something that I didn't mention, our service doesn't just stop at helping a student get from, you know, applying to university and getting their visa. And then once they, they've boarded a plane and gone, our service doesn't just stop there. We really look after our students. Our, our whole goal is you're part of the global education family. and We're here to support you from start to finish. And finish means when you graduate. So if you have any problem when you're on campus and you're not sure who to talk to, you're more than welcome to contact us and we will solve that problem for you. An example of this was one of our um, students studied at the University of Queensland and she was a bit of an introvert and didn't, was struggling to make friends and she contacted me and said, Nico, you know, I'm really struggling to make friends uh, and, and you know, to, to come out of my comfort zone. Uh, I'd really just love to meet some other South African students. And um, you know, she didn't know what to do. So what we did was I went to my contact at the University of Queensland and I said to them, look, the student is feeling homesick. She would really love to meet some other South African students to get out of her shell and maybe assimilate better um, to the university and, 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 and meet some people of, of a similar background to her. And what they did was very subtle. They sent an email out the following weekend to all the students living on campus and said, in celebration of our South African students, we're, putting, we're going to be having a bride day and then in brackets put barbecue. Um, and we would, love, we would love it if you know, you make use of the prize and, and, you know, just have a real social and, and, you know, let's celebrate the South African students on campus. And she managed to meet some other South African students that weekend. And that was the last that we heard from her. Um, but that's something that we just love doing with our students. And we're always here to support you throughout the entire process. So um, that's probably the biggest thing I wanted to, uh, to say, Tracy, is that we want to be part of not just the Crawford family, but we want you to be part of the global education family. And I think Nico, we're going to I'm coming in. Yep, go ahead. Um, there are quite a few questions around scholarships. So the understanding of access to scholarships, and then I think for you to actually explain the fee reduction sure. side of it. Okay, 
So let me get into scholarships um, and, and I'll just tick off the ones. Uh, Tracy, if you could just tick them to say answered live, then we can get into the other ones. Um, okay. Actually, I can do it, don't worry. Um, so basically with scholarship, all of our universities at undergraduate level do run scholarship programs, but they're not scholarships in the sense that um, you would you would assume in terms of fully funded scholarships or like completely covering your tuition. The, the universities at undergraduate level offer what's called what we call a, a fee reduction. And it depends on what country um, or what continent at the time each university is targeting. And these fee reductions can be anywhere from 2000 all the way up to eight to ten thousand dollars or pounds off of the fees. And how this how this works is basically um, with with our universities, students are automatically um, allocated a fee reduction if they come through us and the university is running that program. So you'll automatically be allocated two thousand or five thousand or eight thousand, depending on what they they're offering. But there's no full scholarships at undergraduate level. Um, if if for for some reason you receive an offer but you didn't um, you didn't receive a, a fee reduction, what we can do is go back to our contacts and say, uh, listen, we have a student who's really interested in you. Uh, they are looking for some kind of financial assistance, and if anything's possible, please could you assist us? And what tends to happen from from depending on which uni you apply to. Is they they will allocate that that same fee reduction uh, towards your your tuition. In terms of the bigger scholarships, the fifty percent off or the the seventy five percent off the tuition, um, unfortunately, those are really reserved for second year, third year students, and actually postgraduate students. Uh, in order to qualify as a second and third year student, you would have to um, basically. Uh, be on the dean's list or be one of the top academics and go to the financial department of the university and apply for it. Um, as an undergrad student who's just applying to university, unfortunately, they don't know you from a bar of soap. Um, so they don't allocate those big scholarships. I'm not saying that it's impossible. They do have them from time to time, but there's usually one or two a year for the entire undergraduate cohort for the whole of international. So I don't want to say to you that 100% you will get it. Um, but what we can say is the fee reductions you would definitely qualify for. And I think maybe I should also touch on, on sports scholarships. So um, there, there's a big drive on sports scholarships, uh, especially in the States of America is the, the number one country to go to for a sports scholarship. Um, but there's a very particular process that's involved. And there's a lot of companies here that are taking advantage of South African athletes and sending them to D3 and D4 universities. And now, what that is, let me explain. The American universities are part of, the sporting universities are part of what's called the National College of uh, Athletics Association, the NCAA. And within that, there is four divisions. And those four divisions, um, in the first two divisions, Division One, Division Two, those are televised. And that's where the top athletes should be going to, depending on what sport um, or, or what, um, yeah, depending on what sport that you're going to uh, be playing, you, you should, and, and what your end goal is, and, and for most South African athletes, your end goal is to be a professional player. You need to be going to division one or two team because those are televised. Those are scouted by professional teams. And unfortunately, what's happening here is a lot of students are going to D3 and D4 teams. One, because it's easier to get into them. And two, because they're receiving full scholarships at those universities. Now, the reason those universities are willing to give you a full scholarship is because they want to move their team up into Division Two or Division One, um, obviously Division Two, uh, and basically how they do that is by poaching talent from overseas. You know, let's bring an overseas player who's really good. It'll increase our team strength, help build us up, get us up into a higher division. It'll only cost us, in their sense, a, a, you know, putting a student through for free. And what happens with that student is unfortunately they don't progress uh, at a professional level because they're not at a D1 or D2 university. So it is something that we're trying to combat. We have opened up a, a, a division that, that my brother runs um, that only specializes in D1 and D2. If we can't get you into D1 or D2 university, um, we, won't, uh, we won't do that process because there's no point in sending you 
to a university that's not going to help the student in the long go become a professional. That being said, it doesn't mean that our other universities don't offer scholarships or um, you know, sporting programs. For example, one of our universities in, um, in Australia called Bond University, they have what's called an elite sports program for top achieving athletes. Uh, they do offer some kind of fee reduction. I'm not sure how big it is, depending on what level the, the student is at. But just for an example, the Australian national swimming team that is now obviously at the Olympics trains at Bond University. Um, one of our students that applied to uh, applied through us is actually now a rower for Australia, um, and he went through that program. If any of you were on our webinar yesterday, you would have seen that uh, UW Bristol also has an elite sports athlete program for, uh, for a number of sports, and that also has some kind of funding attached to it, but they're not full scholarships, and that's something you need to be very careful of. Unfortunately, at undergraduate level, there's not a lot of full scholarships and the ones that are available for sports, um, you need to be careful which universities you're going to. And the process is very easy for the sports side of things. If you find a D1 uh, or D2, um, and, and D, D just stands for Division One or Division II, uh, University in the States, it's very easy to apply for it. All you need to do is send, find a coach of that particular sport at the university and send them your sporting CV and they will tell you whether they want you or not, and they will allocate you that scholarship and say, okay, please apply to us. And then we can do that application process for you. So hopefully that covers most of your scholarship questions. I'm gonna go through them now and, and, and answer them uh, one by one. Um, Hannah Murray is asking if we offer any, um, any universities in Portugal. Unfortunately, Hannah, we don't. Um, there's a number of universities in, in Europe that we have considered partnering with, but unfortunately they don't offer the entire programs in English. Um, so we haven't partnered up with universities in Portugal, Italy, um, or, or Spain. At the, well, we do have one that has a business school in Spain, it's called the EU Business School. Um, and we do have a couple of universities in Greece um, that completely teach in English and we can go in, into detail with those. But majority of the other ones, Germany, uh, Norway, we don't because most of their programs are not taught in English um, or completely in English. So unfortunately, we, there isn't as big a demand for those universities. Um, but what we can do is if you do want to apply to any of those universities, we're willing to help you with that process. Uh, unfortunately, in Europe, they have what's called the GDPR Act, which is very similar to South Africa's Poppy Act. And um, it doesn't allow us to um, basically interact with the university. They will only interact with the students. So we can help you as much as we can, but it wouldn't be the same kind of support that you would get from our universities where we can liaise directly with that process um, and with those universities um, where we get the turnaround time a lot faster. Uh, next question is, if a student qualifies as a chartered accountant abroad, are there any SA board exams to be written? Um, as far as I know, there isn't. You, what you need to do is um, you would submit your degree and your, um, your articles, on, if I'm not mistaken, your transcripts and your articles to the, the board here in South Africa, and it's actually just a quick conversion process. That's my understanding of what's happened with students in the past. Um, it's also the SACWA um, conversion board that it's submitted to, and obviously all the universities fall under an international accreditation. Um, so it all falls under that accreditation board. So the, the process of coming back and, and having accreditation is pretty quick. Um, I do know that with studying um, in the UK for, to be a chartered accountant, you get, depending on which university of ours you pick, a lot of them give you exemptions for your articles that you have to write. Um, so I know, for example, City London uh, University, out of 11 exams that you have to write, you get nine exemptions. Um, and I think for Bath, it's the same. Uh, but don't quote me on that. I, I don't remember off the top of my head, but that's one of the nice things with a lot of the universities that we represent is that you do get your, for chartered accountancy, you do get your exemptions from your, your degree. And I'm happy to go into that a bit more in detail if you do want to book a consultation and come, come and chat with us. Um, the next one is... How can we re-access this video and how can others see this video once it's done recording? Um, so we will post all these videos onto our YouTube page and we will make it available uh, to Tracy and the team at, at Crawford 
and and I'm assuming they are going to post it on their website and and and, and you'll be able to find it on on Crawford side of things, but it will also be part of our YouTube, um, so you can access it there. Um, and again, you you're more than welcome to uh, contact us with any of the contact details there, um, and we would be more than happy to obviously answer your questions um, and 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 you know, give you as much information as possible. And that's the one thing that we do offer students is we'll give you as much information as possible so that you can obviously, um, if you wanted to, you could do the process on your own, but obviously having us uh, do it for you, we have the teams at the universities, we have the support. And again, um, all of our universities will accept you on your matric results. So you don't have to worry about doing any additional tests. You don't need to do A-levels. You don't need to do um, the French baccalaureate system. You don't need to do uh, the matric, uh, the the SAT system, the matric, the IB matric is more than enough to get you into all of the universities that we work with. So there's no additional testing that you need to do. Nico, sorry, I'm going to come in on that one and just say yep. to the students who are online as well, is mm -hmm. that you will be present in these schools. Um, yep. So we will be working with the leadership, the deputies, your counsellors, who will be organising visits onto the campus and presentation yep. evenings um, and sessions during the school day as well. So if it is something you guys would really, really like, get hold of your deputies, get hold of your counsellors and ask them to arrange. Awesome. Yeah, we like, like Tracy said, we, we're, we're really here to help you guys make as many decisions as make the decisions as easy as possible. Um, so if there's a group of you that all want to find out about studying medicine, um, you can go to your council and say, can we speak to global? And what we'll do is we'll organize for a council to come up and speak to all of those students, or um, we can have a parents information session. It's really up to you guys to decide how you want, um, you know, you want us to assist you. Um, so students here saying of all the universities that you represent, which one is the most affordable? Uh, it's a bit difficult to say. Each university has um, different fees. There's colleges as well. There's uh, TAFEs, which are based in Australia, which offer diplomas and, and advanced diplomas. So it really depends on what your budget is firstly, um, and then also what program you want to go into. We really do try to accommodate all of that. And unfortunately, if we can't find you a university that fits within your budget, um, we will still assist you if you find one. Um, that that's our goal is to at the end of the day is to make sure that you get the information that you need and you know for us to assist you as best as possible so we will try and accommodate um, your budget um, and we will give you a breakdown depending on the program that you want we will find you the most affordable options as well um, next question please advise what your costs are for the consultation so this is one of the great benefits of this partnership is that we're offering our services to all of the Crawford students free of charge. The only thing we require is um, an email from your counselor to say that you would like to come and make use of our services. We, we're not going to charge you for consultations. Um, we're not gonna charge you for the application process. Um, that's part of our, our agreement with Crawford to assist your students um, to assist all the students to apply overseas so there's there'll be no fee for us um but obviously the fees directly between yourselves and universities and immigration um those would be uh, paid directly to them there's no middleman involved you would never be paying a third party uh, in terms of paying your tuition or paying a visa fee it would go directly to the required person so um there's never um, a middleman involved when it comes to the money changing hands uh, next question. If we plan on taking gap year and, and only going to university in 2023, when should we begin the application process? Okay, so if you're planning on taking a gap year, um, you can begin the application process whenever um, during that gap year. The, it depends on the university that you're applying to and the program that you're applying to, um, if there's a deadline um, or, or a, a late application um, test that you might need to do so for example medicine you have to write what's called a UCAT test so in matric you have to have booked to write that UCAT test by the end of August in order to apply for medicine to most UK universities and most Australian universities that doesn't mean that if you haven't booked the test um, that you can't apply for medicine it just means that the universities that you want to apply to would be less so in terms of applying the, the process, uh, you can start the process at any time once you've taken the gap year. 
um, and it'll be a lot faster because you would have received your final matric certificate. Um, if you're in matric, uh, depending on what you're applying for, um, there are certain application dates, but mainly for medicine in Australia, you'd need to apply before the end of July. Um, and for the UK, you'd need to apply for medicine before the, the 15th of October via UCAS, but you would have also need to have booked um, what's called the UCAT test. You don't have to write it, but you have to book it because the booking for the year closes in, the, in August. So if you haven't booked that test, it limits which university you can apply to. And happy again to go into detail with that when you have an initial consultation with us. Next question. Hello, I'm in grade 10 and just wanted to know what is the right time to go get associated with you in terms of shortlisting the universities and the right preparation to crack the requirement of the shortlisted universities? Okay, so this depends on you and if you know what, what you want to study or you don't know what you want to study. Again, I know that you pick subjects in grade nine um, based on what you think you want to study at, you know, at the end of matric. Um, so we can advise you based on, on what you're planning on picking and what you plan on studying after school. Um, but again, with the, the pathway programs, if you've changed your mind by the time you get to matric, you can still go and apply to universities through the, you know, through the pathway program. So in terms of when is a good time to start with us, I'd say grade 11 is a good time to obviously participate in our webinars so you can speak and, and, and see what our universities have to offer. And then um, when it comes to actually applying and engaging with us, I would say do that at the beginning of matric, you know, come and have a consultation, you know, figure out which universities you should be applying to. And then, um, you know, we would tell you what we need, but it's usually your term two results that we use to start the application process. So we can only start the application process with your term two results, or if you do get term one results, we can use those, or we can use prelims. It's really up to you. If we use any of those, we will get what's called the conditional offer. So you'll be accepted on the condition that your final results are the same as what's been, um, as what's been given to the universities, or they'll say, unfortunately, these marks are a bit too low, but in order to be accepted, we would require these marks. And, and they would say two sevens and, and and three sixes or um, four sevens and one six. Um, so yeah, it, it really depends. But I'd say in terms of engaging with us to start the application process, it would be in grade 12. But I mean, we're happy to talk to you at any, at any level from grade nine, right up to matric to help you make the best decision possible. Uh, next question is, what happens if we have a European passport and would like to study in the UK? Um, so the application process for the visa is a lot easier if you have a European passport, but you still require a visa now because of Brexit. Um, it's just a lot faster on a European passport than it is on a South African, um, but the process is exactly the same. You, you're now required a, uh, to have a, a visa as a European student, unless you've applied for what's called pre-settlement status, which you would have had to have done by, if I'm not mistaken, May of this year. Do you support us with the universities in Portugal? Um, we can assist you as, as, as far as possible. Obviously, I don't understand the entire process with the Portuguese universities, and that's just because we don't have any agreements. But as far as I know, with GDPR regulations, um, they would not communicate directly with us. So we would probably just be advising you on what they're requesting. Um, and we can sort of help you as much as possible. But unfortunately, we don't have universities that we're contracted to there. so. Um, we'd help you as much as we can, but I can't guarantee you that we would um, be able to, to give you the same level of service as what we would do with our, our own universities that we're contracted to. Uh, next, so where do we, we go first to apply for a university in the UK, the website or, okay, so to apply to the UK, please contact us and speak to one of our consultants. They will give you our step-by-step -step guide for UCAS if you do want to use our services and it will walk you through creating the UCAS application. If you're not sure how that guide works or if it's confusing you in any way, um, the counselor will also walk you through it. Um, and other things that we can do is we can actually come to the school and do a whole UCAS um, workshop where we can show you how to create the application, how to go through it step-by-step. Step. So it's really up to you guys, but in terms of if you're doing it on an individual basis, you're more than welcome to come into our office uh, when Rosebank uh, or into any of our other offices in Durban or, or Cape Town. And um, 
or we can do it by zoom and we can walk you through it but the guide is very extensive it's got pictures and it shows you exactly what to do and it will link you to us straight away so you don't have to worry and we get a notification on our side to say this student has applied and again one of our counselors would then be assigned to you to monitor that application and you will you know just liaise with us directly as much as possible if there's anything that you're confused about we'll answer it for you um next question is are there remote study options with international universities so my child can continue to stay in south africa but graduate from an international university so yes there are um a lot of a lot of the universities obviously all online at the moment because of covid um, the UK universities are open and students can go and study on campus, but obviously Australia's um, borders are closed, so it is currently all online. Unfortunately, that won't stay the same forever, and a lot of these programs won't be offered online anymore. It will just be the, the original programs that they offered online. So what we would have to do is give you a list of programs that will be completely taught online, and you are able to obviously just study those programs online in South Africa, but qualify for an international program, uh, international degree. Um, so we would be able to give you that list. But right now, um, because of what's going on with COVID, a lot of pretty much all the programs are online, except for the ones like medicine and, and, and some practical engineering programs where students have to be on shore. Um, so it, again, it depends, but yes, it is possible to do an online degree, a complete online degree with some of our universities. Are you able to assist with student loans? Um, unfortunately, no, we're not allowed to assist with student loans. Um, we are purely an application and visa uh, team. Um, again, with our universities, we are directly contracted to the university. So we're very different to other agencies um, because other agencies do not hold these contracts. Um, we get paid by our universities. That's where we make our money. Um, other agencies do not, and that's why they do charge exorbitant fees um, because they do not hold physical uh, contracts with the, these universities. So um, they're actually just applying internationally the same way you would on your own. They're dealing with an international team. They're not dealing with a specific team on campus. So you need to be careful who you use and be careful what you're going to pay um, because you can actually do all of this on your own um once you've had a consultation with us if you don't want to use our services um but again like i said what we do because of those contracts with the universities we have our teams and on on site and they can obviously uh, we can obviously speed up the process um working with them uh, and again with the student loans um you some of the universities uh, can put you in touch with if you qualify you know if you have the right passport they can put you in touch but um, unfortunately, the student loans, I think you would have to apply for here locally. It wouldn't be anything to do with the universities themselves. Uh, next question is, what is the process for applying to an Ivy League? Um, so Ivy League universities, you apply through what's called Common App. Um, we have a subdivision called Global Ivy Leagues, um, which my brother runs. Um, and that process, he will guide you through creating a Common App application writing a personal statement because common app then goes into each specific university um, and each specific university has its own requirements um, we don't recommend it for undergrad because ivy leagues are postgraduate universities and i can get into more detail in a, in a general consultation for you um, but basically that ivy league service is a paid service um, and and we can go into details if you do want to take that service but um the process in terms of applying is exactly the same in terms of what documents we need after the consultation, but it wouldn't be a free service. You'd have to pay for that service. Um, one. What is the duration of a pathway course? Uh, pathway programs are about eight months. So um, like I said, if you started it in, let's say, the January, May intake, you would finish around about end of August, beginning of September, and then be able to start year one in September if you were going to the UK. But um, if you went to Australia, you would do it for eight months. If you went to Canada, the States, the youth, um, it's a bit complicated. I'd have to talk to you in person about it. But in, in Canada and the States, it's actually considered the same as first year. So there's no additional time if you do a pathway in Canada and the States because it's structured the same year, same way as first year university, but I, I'd have to, we'd have to have a one-on-one -on -one consultation for me to make you understand that. 
scholarships available through debate if you have complete completed internationally um again that's that would be on a case by case when we put in your application we'd have to see if they would consider you for for a scholarship for debate I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see these a little bit better. Um, will you guide non-South African students from Crawford? Yes, of course. We help all students as long as you reside in South Africa. It doesn't matter what passport you have. Um, it's not limited to just South African passport holders. Any passport holder can apply through us um, as long as you reside in, in South Africa. When is the virtual expo scheduled to start? Um, it's going to start mid-August. As soon as we get the dates finalized with all of our universities, that will come uh, directly to Crawford and the marketing team will, will put it on your newsletters and on the, uh, on the school website and it'll all be available to you. So you'll be able to, um, to, to register exactly the same way you registered for today's event. Yeah, I was going to come in on that one and just say to all the, the students and families that we we will be notifying, we will be sending through all the links. Um, so don't worry about that, it's on its way. Awesome. Um, another question is, do we offer universities in Holland? Yes, we do. We represent quite a few in, in Holland um, and we represent universities in Ireland, in Greece, in Cyprus. So there's quite a few universities that we, um, that we do, um, obviously uh, quite a few countries that we do work with. Um, and again, that listing will, again, I think be mailed out to you so you can see all the universities that we work with. Uh, Jackie, how many years of high school science is required to be admitted into humanities, uh, humanities and art degree like industrial design? Um, you, to be honest, you just need to do uh, physical science. So as long as you've done physical science, um, that's enough for industrial design. Um, and I'm assuming that's two years from grade 11 and, and 12. Um, so that's enough to get you in. But again, if you haven't taken those subjects, we can go the pathway route to, to make up for, for not having those subjects. Uh, what universities have we partnered with in Japan? Unfortunately, we don't have universities in Japan yet. We're still looking for some that um, sort of meet our international standard and, and accreditation level, but also offer the programs completely in English and have the same level of support that we expect for all our international students. So I haven't signed one up yet, but if there is one that you want to apply to and you don't know how, um, we can sort of work with you to try and get you in. Okay, a few more cost ones, which we've covered. Again, so just with the cost, there won't be any cost for, for us to assist you. As long as you come through your school counselor, um, we're happy to assist you um with the entire process free of charge what is the best time to submit applications for my daughter she's in grade 11 again like i said once we have your term two or term one results in the trick we can start the application process do we have any Belgian universities unfortunately we don't we do have one german university but it's actually a it's a uk university with the german campus um so we can assist you with that but in terms of Belgian. Uh, we don't have any yet again same process once we find a few that meet our criteria and if we do have a demand for it we will we will look at partnering up but unfortunately um right now we um unfortunately right now we we don't have any on on our books but we will again assist you as much as we can Next question, does doing math lit affect your UCAS application process? Depends on what you want to study. If what you want to study requires maths, then you may have an issue with maths lit. But if what you want to study doesn't require maths lit, then sorry, it doesn't require maths, then maths lit will be okay. So uh, again, in a consultation, we'll be able to answer this for you and um, basically uh, guide you through what's required in terms of percentages and subjects, depending on the degree that you want to study. Um, do we assist applications to Israel? Unfortunately, no. Again, same situation as Belgium and Japan. We don't have any of these yet, but if uh, we do sign up with one, we will obviously update you. But again, if you want to apply, we will help you as much as we can. Does matric get you directly into universities in the UK or A levels required? So again, just going back to my previous statement, all of our universities will accept you with your matric results. You do not need to do A-levels to apply direct, but you do need to meet the minimum requirements. 
And again, we will guide you through that during the consultation process when you when you come in to, to apply. We'll tell you what's required in order to um, apply for a particular degree. We'll tell you what grades you need. I'm a parent, can you kindly remind me again the ways or means or platforms to communicate with you or contact us? So on the screen, if you look at your bottom right, uh, there's our contact information there. If you scan the QR code with your iPhone or with a QR scanner on an Android, it'll take you straight to our website. Um, our website the details are at the top right. Uh, would be your top right? Yeah, I think your top right. Um, it says Global Education. All of our contact information is there and you can get it from all of your counselors at school. They have all of our information depending on which uh, city you're in, you have the counselors information for each city. Do we represent Oxford or Cambridge? Unfortunately, no, we don't. Just like the Ivy Leagues, uh, these universities receive over 200,000 applications per degree, um, and they don't require uh, education agents to work with them. So uh, unfortunately, we don't, but we can assist you. Unfortunately, Oxford and Cambridge do, and Imperial do require A-levels. So those are the three universities you have to have A-levels to apply to. Currently in the COVID situation, they they are exempting students who haven't done A-levels, but I know that next year they're going to go back to having A-levels in order to apply. Do you guys only work with major universities or do you also work with smaller, more focused universities like fine arts and things in that realm? Yes, of course, we have very specialized universities. For example, one of them is Drew University. It's a lot smaller, liberal arts university in New York. Um, so it really depends on, on, on what it is that you want to study. We do have you know, niche orientated universities. For example, we work with the University of Arts London, which is the top arts university in the world. Um, so anything to do with film and media, graphic design, fine art, history, um, acting, performing arts, they're one of the top universities, in, the, or in fact, the top university. And obviously that's what they specialize in. So it depends again on what you want to study and, and you know, where you're looking at. We do have very specialized programs. Uh, for example, in Australia for performing arts, we have uh, the WAPA, WAPA Performing Arts School, which is where Heath Ledger, Nicole Kidman, Hugh Jackman, they all studied uh, there. Um, so again, it just depends on what it is that you want. And then we sort of walk, uh, work our way uh, backwards and offer you, um, give you a list of universities and programs that uh, fit in with what you want. And that also has to do with lifestyle. So if you want to be in a big city or in a smaller city with this, just a university campus, it really depends on you um, and what you want. What would the cost of first year in the UK for a CA degree cost approximately? Um, it depends on the university. Uh, we do have a student handbook, which we will be, uh, which a lot of your counselors do have on uh, at school. And we will be printing new ones and we do have cost estimates. Depends on the uni that you're going to, but some university fees range from 13,000 pounds a year all the way up to about 25, depending on which university you go to, excuse me. Um, so it really depends on the university that you're going to uh, in terms of cost. Um, and again, we can break that down for you when you come in for a consultation. Do we work with Canadian universities? Yes, we do. We work with a number of Canadian universities, so we're happy to help you with those as well. How does Global assist students with applying to Ivy Leagues? Um, I think I've answered that, but if uh, you want us to go into more detail, please uh, feel free to contact uh, George at Global-Education. It's there in the bottom right. Um, he actually deals with the Ivy Leagues, so um, he, can, he can guide you through that process. How soon do we need to do applications for 2022 and when are the due dates? Um, so I'm not sure uh, what is this exactly you want to apply for? But like I said, for 2022, um, for medicine, you need to basically have your UCAS application done by the 15th of October this year. Um, you need to have booked what's called a UCAT test. Um, but for any other, any other degree or program, you can start the UCAS application now, but you've got right up until, um, for the UK, you've got right up until the, the 1st of May of next year to get your application in. For Australia, depending on when you want to start, you can um, basically, uh, you have right up until, let's say, the 15th of January. If you want to go in February of next year, you've got up until the 15th of January of next year to apply. Um, for America, you've got right up until a month before. 
So for example, if this, the course starts in August, you have um, the whole month of July would be the latest to apply. Uh, the problem I would say would be Canada. Canada is an issue because the visa takes three months. So we need to, if, if your start date is May, we obviously need to start uh, have your application in as soon as possible so that you have enough time to apply for your visa. Um, so it, again, it depends on when, which country and what program, um, but I'd say right now, if you're in matric, you can apply to the UK, to Australia, to Canada, to America, if you've got your term two results, we can start that process now. How much does an overseas undergraduate degree typically cost per year as a range? Um, it depends on the program, but I mean, for, for most generic, when I say generic, uh, most programs that aren't specialized like engineering and, and medicine, you're looking at about anywhere from, I'd say 380,000 Rand a year, that's including your accommodation up to about uh, 450. So if you, if in, in that range, um, I'd say is a good range to, to, to work on. Um, and then obviously your medicine, unfortunately medicine, if you want a degree that's worth the papers written on and to be able to practice around the world, you pay for that accreditation. So medicine is quite expensive. You're looking at about seven, 750 to 800,000 Rand a year. Um, but again, we'll, we can give you rough estimates and breakdowns uh, depending on the program that you want to study. Uh, costs for us again we don't have a cost as long as you come through your school counselor do we help with local universities unfortunately no we only work and are contracted to overseas universities our top universities such as harvard and mit part of your context yes we do have top universities in fact a lot of our universities fall under the top 300 worldwide um, we have Russell Group universities, we have Group of Eight universities, we have uh, universities such as Monash and Melbourne, uh, Exeter, Edinburgh, St. Andrews. Unfortunately, we don't do the Ivy Leagues because they don't work with uh, uh, agents, so we don't do Harvard and MIT. But again, it depends on the program that you want to study and, and at what level. So for example, I get parents who say, I want my child to go and do a business degree at Harvard Business School, uh, an undergrad degree there but they don't know that Oregon State University's business school is just as good and, um, you know, is, is, is probably half the fees, if not, yeah, probably about half the fees. Um, so that's the type of thing that we would discuss in a consultation. We'd figure out the best university at undergraduate level in terms of ranking because world rankings that you see with Ivy League universities and th that has to do with PhD uh, and, and postgraduate master level studies. If we have a UK passport, does this help with tuition fees in the UK? Um, that's a difficult one to answer because that's made on a case by case by universities. So even though you've got a UK passport, unless you've been paying rates and taxes and, and, and contributing to the system, you might not qualify for domestic fees. So it depends on um, the university. They will assess based on um, based on your passport and, and they give you what's called a fee assessment form after you've applied to see whether you qualify for the domestic fees or not. I know it's an unfair question, but more figure for how much tuition fees are depending on your passport. Um, and each country represent. Okay, uh, ballpark figures, I guess like um, if I could say in the UK, you look at fees anywhere from 13,000, tuition fees from 13,000 pounds to up to about 27,000 pounds a year, depending on which uni you go to. Um, in Australia, you're looking at about 29,000 Australian dollars up to about 45,000 Australian dollars. Um, in Canada, you're looking at fees from about 12,000 Canadian dollars up to about 20,000 Canadian dollars. Um, America can range from about 15,000 American dollars a year, all the way up to 75,000 American dollars a year. And that's if you're going to the Ivy Leagues, they're far more expensive. Uh, the Netherlands, you're looking at about 8,000 euros a year um, if you're not an EU passport holder. Uh, same thing with Cyprus, same thing with Ireland. Um, so those are a bit more affordable. Um, so again, it depends. Um, in the EU business school, which is in Spain, is also about 12,000 euros. So it depends on the country that you're going to.
uh, what grade can we register with you guys? You can register with us whenever you want. You can go into our website and subscribe so you never miss a, a mailer that comes from us. Um, or you can uh, um, sign up through one of our webinars that one of that your schools will send to you. Um, or you can go into our Facebook page. It's really up to you. You can sign up with us at any time. Uh, are there any universities available in Korea? Unfortunately, no. The same uh, ish, uh, situation as uh, Japan and, 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 and Belgium and, and uh, Portugal. Unfortunately, we don't have any yet. Uh, student says, I'm planning to do physics. Okay, that's great. It will help you with anything engineering related or uh, science related will definitely help you. I'm not sure what your end goal is here, but it will help you. Um, if a student studies broad, a law abroad, are they, I'm assuming, uh, there we go, are they able to write an essay board exam? Uh, Renal, it depends on which country. If they study law in uh, the UK and in Australia, then yes, because um, it's common law, uh, Commonwealth law that they qualify for, so they should be able to write the board exam. I know that they do have to study for the test, but um, they are able to qualify because it's the same thing, vice versa. If students study law here and then decide to go across, they do um, have to do a couple of conversion exams uh, from here going across, but I know that from overseas coming back here, it's just writing the test that they have to do. Do we offer any universities in Paris besides Le Cordon Bleu? Unfortunately, not yet. We're still waiting for a few more that are willing to teach completely in English. That's our biggest issue at the moment. We can sign up with a lot of European universities, but they don't teach in English. It's, um, we just don't have the demand. Uh, but if you do want to go, again, like I said, we'll still help you apply. Do you assist with German universities? Yes, we've got one there that we, we currently work with, but we will help you with any others if you want to apply. Again, we don't have the contracts um, in place, but we will help you as much as we can. Where can we find the list of universities that we work with? Uh, um, I'm assuming Tracy and the team are gonna send an email out to all of you that will have our, our university list or at least given to your, your um, uh, given to your, your counselors. You can contact us for that list. We'll email it directly to you. And also on our website, you can see a list of universities directly there um, by country. What is the process for applying to Canada? Canada is very straightforward. Again, like Australia, paper uh, application through our portal. So we would give you an application form to fill in. You'd give it back to us and you'd answer that. Um, sorry, we'd submit that directly to our contacts at the universities. What extracurricular activities would assist with the application? Um, you don't really have to do extracurricular activities unless you're applying for um, medicine in particular, where you have to do job shadowing um, and community work. Um, obviously, anything that you do outside of school that benefits your community does help your application as a whole. But in terms of all of our universities, um, the, the main requirement is unfortunately uh, academic, so your metric results are the biggest factor in your application. Does anything change if you do Cambridge? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that. I'm assuming if you're saying if you do the A-level system, uh, it just means that the entry criteria is, is a bit more strict uh, in the sense that whatever they state on their website for, a, for Cambridge for A-levels, that's the stipulated um, entry requirement, whereas with metric, it's a percentage base and there's a bit of wiggle room there, but we can discuss that in a consultation. If I decide to go to China, can we assist? We can try, we can help you as much as possible. We used to have a couple of universities there, but they're no longer teaching students in English. So <clears throat> unfortunately we don't have any on our books, but again, we'll still help you. I know the Chinese uh, uh, visa process if you require a student visa process, um, but in terms of applying, we will help you as much as possible. Do universities cover student accommodation costs? Unfortunately, no, you have to pay your accommodation costs. And again, those figures that I said earlier also include your living expenses, but we can go into detail in a consultation of what it will cost you in terms of living expenses per country, and then obviously your tuition per country as well. One thing I should say is that none of these fees do you have to pay upfront. You only pay per semester, 
that you're enrolling in. And the same thing with your accommodation. You only pay per semester. So these amounts that we talk about, you don't have to pay a huge lump sum upfront. You do have to show some of those, um, <clears throat> those fees for the application process, but you don't have to pay it upfront. Is there any Crawford School advantage in any of the universities in the UK or Australia? Um, well, I could say the Crawford School advantage is now that you have our um, team as part of Crawford and uh, we have our teams that are obviously do the entire application process and, and speed up the whole process. So I'd say that would be your advantage is that the process is a lot faster now if you use our services and we have the teams on site at the universities to speed up that entire application process for you. So that would be your advantage and the fact that you don't have to do A-levels or SATs to go to any of these universities. Can you please further elaborate on the pathway program? Um, I'm not 100% sure what you would like me to say. Um, the way that it's structured, it's done on the university campus in, a, in the, their own building on the university campus. You're in classrooms of about 25 students per, uh, per class. You have two extra classes, how to write academic uh, references for assignments, uh, how to write academic English for assignments so that you're better prepared for your assignments and doing your university work. It's like a big brother program. They sort of guide you and hold your hand uh, through what is expected as a university student. So you're better prepared for first year of uni. Um, you have your academic supervisor, you have a career supervisor, you have all access to all the same facilities as a university student. So you're allowed to play sports, you're allowed to um, join their, their teams, you can use the library. There's no difference between you and a university student other than you go into the uh, pathway program building on the university campus. It's actually a very popular choice for a lot of our students, even though they've got the grades to go and direct because they have the added support from the academic supervisor, the career supervisor, and it gets it gives them an opportunity to be an international student on campus without the pressure of being a first year university student and trying to figure everything out. So we do have a lot of students who and parents who prefer this option because they have that extra support whilst they're on the university campus. So I hope that gives you a bit more information. Do you work with Canadian universities? Yes, we do. How long does the application process take and receiving acceptance letter from the UK. Um, so this process, uh, generally, if you apply on your own through UCAS, you would only get an answer at the end of February because the UK universities, um, if you're in the trick now, would only look at UCAS applications at the end of February because uh, UK students start applying in January. Um, so you would, on your own, only get an answer in, in, um, at the end of Feb. But uh, basically with us, because we have our own teams on the ground, we would basically um, speed up that process. So once you've submitted an application, we go to our team and say, the student has submitted an application. Please, can you come in and make an offer as soon as possible? We usually get an answer within a month of you applying. Um, it also just depends on how soon you apply, because if you applied now, um, unfortunately, a lot of the UK universities are still working on the September intake. So they would prioritize the students starting now in September, so it would be slightly more delayed. Um, but the, uh, the turnaround time with us is a lot faster. You definitely get an answer within, I'd say, 30, 30 to 40 work, working days for the UK if you applied this year for next year. Um, and then obviously, if you applied next year for next year, then uh, the turnaround time is a lot faster because they're already in that process. Um, with Australian universities, like I said, anywhere from 10 to 20 working days, same with the States, same with Canada, same with Ireland. Um, so it's quite fast with us. <coughs> um, do any of the universities aligned with you take IGCSE certificate? Um, unfortunately, no, it's, uh, it's not high enough. You'd probably have to do, if you're lucky, you'd, you might be able to get into a foundation. Um, but as far as I know, no, you can't. You'd need to have at least an AS in order to apply for foundation. Do we work with any universities in New York? Yes, we do. We work with a few. Um, our top one, would, I'd say, would be Drew University. It's in, a, uh, it's in New Jersey, but in a nice town called Morristown, and I've been there. It's very, very nice. Um, 
and we also work with Pace University. So those are two that we currently work with. Uh, we, we got a student in for a master's at NYU. Um, but again, like I said, Ivy Leagues, we, we tend to focus for postgraduate students, not for undergrad. Matrixa writing trials in August, that's awesome. We can use your trial results to start the application process, but we don't need to use those. We can use your term two results if you've got them. I know that some students uh, don't do particularly too great in trials, so you can always use your term two results if they're better. Are there chess scholarships? Unfortunately, not that I'm aware of, but we can look into it, but I wouldn't want to say yes or no. I'd be lying to you. How do we recommend going about choosing the right university? I'm in grade 10 and having a hard time researching. Any tips? Uh, yes, my tip would be what would what is your end goal? What do you want to be? And let's work backwards. Um, and, and that's what we like to do with, with students. We like to know what it is that they want to do with their lives. What, what do they want to be? And then we work backwards in terms of finding the right degree that leads into that program. And then from having that degree, we find um, you know which universities and which countries offer it and then sort of help you break down that list we do work with quite a few um, industrial psychologists who are really good at helping you understand what's um, the best for you and and what kind of career would be uh, fulfilling to you we don't we don't want to do those tests ourselves we'd rather you you do it with a, a professional who um, can really help you understand not just give you an aptitude test online but really go through an in-detailed breakdown of who you are as a person to help you find the, the correct program for you to study. So we do have a list of industrial psychologists that we work with in each city. So if you'd like that, please just send us an email. We can give that to you. And you just reference Global Education and, and they will, they will you know, obviously put that together for you. Do we have universities in the Netherlands? I've answered this. Yes, we do. Once a student has started living and studying overseas, do you have any suggestions on the best way to send money from South Africa on a monthly basis for living expenses, et cetera, besides a bank, Swift Transfer, Revolut and Wise apps don't seem to allow transfers from South Africa to Netherlands? Ooh, um, the only other one I can think of is Flywire. Um, uh, I know that there is a MoneyGram and Western Union is another way. Um, I know that you can also open up, uh, depending on which bank you use, you can open up a, a, a foreign card that you can load. It's, it's basically a, a bank account that's linked to a card that allows you to transact overseas and you can top up that card. Um, it, it depends on which bank you use because uh, then you can just top it up here and, and use that overseas. So um, there's various ways, but I'd say that would probably be the easiest. Once you graduate overseas, can you... Can students stay there to work or do they have to return to South Africa? <clears throat> Interesting. So depending on which country you study in, like I said, UK and Australia, you can stay up for up to two years um, and, and work. And obviously, if you find a company that's willing to sponsor you in, you, in, you can stay and obviously work there. Um, but ideally, the goal is to come back to South Africa. Um, great examples, myself and my brother, my older brother stayed in Australia, uh, found a job. Um, got sponsored in. He's now an Australian citizen and, and lives there. I am an African baby at heart. I've always wanted to live in Africa. Uh, and I came straight back once I finished my studies um, and, and used my degree here. And, and the nice thing about having an international degree, it does open up a few more doors or quite a lot more doors for you here because you bring in international experience back with you. So one of my friends did a finance degree um, at the University of Western Australia. And a lot of our friends at UCT did the same degree. Um, and they went in, when they graduated, the UCT friends of ours went in as um, junior analysts uh, and, and junior data analysts um, in, in some of the finance programs. And my friend from Australia went straight into a portfolio manager position um, for an Australian uh, portfolio at Citibank, um, mainly because he, he had studied in the Australian system and understood their way of doing things. So um, it, he was put in at, at an advantage when he came back here. So. Uh, there's, there's benefits to both, and, and, and we would love it if students would obviously come back to South Africa and use their expertise and start businesses and, and really uh, you know, give back to South Africa, but obviously a lot of students do want to get the experience to stay and work, and you do qualify for post-study work visas. Like I said, in the UK, you can stay for up to two years. Um, in 
uh, Australia, you can stay for up to two years. In Canada, you can stay up to four years. Um, so it really depends on where you study. In order to qualify for corporate law, what subjects do you need to have done in high school? Um, so you need to, the main ones are English and history. Um, you don't need to, uh, anything else as a bonus, but the main two that they're looking for is your English and your history. Um, and, and, and a good, uh, decent understanding of maybe business. Uh, you don't have to take business. Um, or decent understanding of maths, but it's usually your English and your history that they mainly look at. Do we represent universities in Hawaii? Unfortunately, no, we don't. Do we have any universities in the UAE? Yes, we do. We have a few universities, uh, actually UK-based universities that have campuses in the UAE that students can go to, but they don't get the full experience because they're not full campuses. Would we be accepted with IB qualifications at some UK universities? You would be accepted to all of our UK universities. The only ones that you wouldn't be able to apply to is Cambridge and Oxford and Imperial. Do we assist with Canada? Yes, we do. How does global work if you want to apply to an Ivy League? I've answered this, but if you um, want more information, again, you can contact George. Uh, his details are there at the bottom, bottom right of your screen. Does AP Maths count towards your final results in terms of university applications? Again, this depends. Um, you do require AP Maths if you're going to go to the Netherlands for direct entry. They do require AP Maths for a lot of their programs or AP English. So depending on what you're studying, you do require an AP subject for the, for the Netherlands. Um, uh, in the UK, it depends on which university you go to, what they require AP Maths for. So some universities for their engineering programs require AP Maths. Bath University because they have the top actuarial science um, and an accounting degree in the UK for undergraduate level, they do require AP maths as well. So um, again, we would advise you during the consultation. Canadian universities again, yes we do. Do I need maths to study business science abroad? Yes, you do. You need normal maths to study business science. But if you don't and you do maths lit, we can always get you in on the foundation program um, to make up for the fact that you don't have normal maths. How long do they extend the visa for work after being done studying? Again, it depends on the country, but usually in the UK and Australia, it's two years. Um, and uh, in Canada, it's four years. The Liberal Arts University in New York was Drew University. It's, it's uh, one of my favorite universities. Um, and actually, there's a girl called, um, oh, my mind's gone black, but there's a Crawford girl from uh, Lelouchia Crawford um, who's currently studying there. Um, Brazilian girl, and it's slipping my mind. Uh, um, I'd have to find it for you again. But uh, yeah, there's actually a Crawford two Crawford students that are currently studying there. We no longer attend Crawford in grade, in grade 12. How much would it cost roughly? Okay, so if you don't attend Crawford, um, we do have an, uh, an admin fee of 2,000 Rand that covers your paperwork and the visa for, for the applications and for the, the visa process. So that is, that is our fee. That's the only fee that you would pay us. It's 2,000 Rand. Do you help students when it comes to living situations in, in new countries when they're attending universities? Hmm. Um, we can help you as much as possible. We don't get involved in that, but we can assist or put you in touch with the right people to help you with your living uh, situation. But in terms of your accommodation, um, we can only really help you with uh, university accommodation. If you're picking private accommodation, we unfortunately can't assist. Do you assist with the general education diploma, the GED? Yes, we do. If you've done a GED, we can help you. Please book a consultation and we can go through that with you. What range of marks are required to study medicine? Like everywhere else, the, the higher your marks, the better, but I'd say about an 85% average at matric is enough to get you into medicine. But if you don't have that average, um, again, we can do the foundation program to get you into medicine. And you just need to pass matric to, to qualify for that. If you're graduating in 2022, will we need to apply to university straight after we get our final matric results so that we can start uni in 2023? <clears throat> no, we can start the application process, um, not straight after graduation, but with your term two results. So you, we can start in the middle of your matric year. Um, we've got plenty of time. 
are fees payable up front? Again, like I said earlier, fees are fees are only applicable. Um, you only pay per semester that you've enrolled, so you don't have to pay the um, um, the fees up front. You only pay per semester that you've enrolled in. Uh, scholarship process. So again, it's a fee reduction, and they're automatically allocated depending on your grades. And it's anywhere from two to five thousand dollars off of your fees, or up to ten thousand dollars, depending on the university. So we call them fee reduction uh, reductions, not scholarships. How much cheaper are local fees in the U in the UK if you qualify for these on a UK passport? But to be honest, they're not that much cheaper. I guess it depends on which university you're going to. Um, they're pretty standard. They're about ten thousand pounds for domestic fees. And then obviously, depending on an international student and which uni, the, those fees fluctuate. So for example, UW Bristol, their fees are about 14,000 pounds, but uh, University of Edinburgh, their fees are about 27,000 pounds, if I'm not, not mistaken, 25,000 pounds. So for an international student, so they do vary quite a lot depending on the uni, but if you're a domestic student, it's 10,000 uh, pounds across the board. What are the language requirements like in most non-English countries for universities? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by this. Uh, do you mean studying at a university that doesn't teach in English? Um, I'm not sure. I think you have to do a year at that university learning their language before you can start your university degree. Do you need to be from Crawford to use our services? No, you don't need to be from Crawford. Um, uh, like we said, we have this agreement with Crawford to assist all of their students and to go on, on to school, uh, the school campus to assist and, and to do on-site consultations and parents' evenings. But if you're not from Crawford, you're more than welcome to contact us directly, come into our office, and we can do all of that with you via consultation um, with one of our senior counselors. What is the Pathway Program? It's a bridging course, mainly. Um, to help you get into university if you don't have the grades or you've taken the wrong subjects. That's really what a pathway program is. It's the easiest way to explain it. It's actually called a foundation program, but most students understand it as a pathway or as a bridging course. Do you offer universities in Mauritius? Yes, we do. We've got quite a few universities that have campuses in Mauritius. We have Curtin University, which is an Australian university that has a campus in Mauritius. Their fees are a lot cheaper. The cost is a lot cheaper and you qualify with uh, an Australian degree. So, um, and there's Middlesex University as well, which is a UK university that also has the same campus. So we do have options there and they're quite affordable. Can you get accepted with the government NEC? Yes, you can. You can apply with your government NEC as well. Do you need SATs and A-levels for Canada? Not with our universities. If you go to an Ivy League like British Columbia or McGill, then you would, but for our universities, you don't. Let's say you finish your studies and then you don't get a job or work. What happens? <clears throat> to be quite honest, uh, this never really happened. Um, but if you don't, you would usually come back to South Africa. I'm assuming you mean if you don't get a job or work in the, in the country of your study, um, you would come back to South Africa um, and, and obviously look for work here. Um, but we've never really run into this issue to be honest we've never had a student say you know i'm really struggling and you know can you help me find a job um because most of the time they, they're really well equipped and they do they do do make use of the university service to help them find jobs as well um so never really run into this problem to be honest <clears throat> Can a student look at two different career paths as part of the application process? Yes, you can. Depending on which university you apply to, you can pick two different programs, of course. Uh, next question. Are you able to assist with student loans? We've answered that. Do you have to live and school in SA to use your services? Um, you don't. Depending on where you're based in, in Africa, we can assist you. If you're not based in in, in Africa, um, just make contact with us. We might be able to help you. There's, there's some jurisdiction, uh, uh, some regional restrictions that we, we have. So we do help stu students from other countries in Africa. And we have helped some students in, in Dubai and, and in the UAE. So um, you just need to let us know where, you, where you're based and we can help you. 
after the visa has expired, what's the next step to come? The next step, you come back home. Again, this has to do with whether you're going to take up the post-study work visa or not. Um, so that's really, really up to you guys um, if you're going to take that up or not. If you don't take up the post-study work visa, then yes, you would have to come back. Um, but if not, then um, you would basically, um, how do I say it? You would basically come back to, uh, if you don't take up the post-study work visa, you come back to South Africa and look for a job here. Can I just ask, if you get a job in America, but you want to be a permanent citizen, can that happen, like stay there and not come back to that South Africa? Um, yes, so it is possible. Again, this has to do with if you secured a job, um, you'd have to go through the process of applying for permanent residency and then for citizenship. In order to apply for permanent residency, you'd have to have a, um, a work uh, visa in place with your business or with the company that you're working for. And they'd have to be willing to sponsor you in in order to get that. And then after a certain amount of time, you can apply for your citizenship to stay. Um, so that's the process my brother went through in Australia. Will you guys assist students with the necessary procedures that will help them stay in overseas countries? Um, unfortunately, no, we don't really assist with that. Um, like I said, in Australia, we've got direct migration that does that for students. Um, and in in the UK and Australia, sorry, in the UK and Canada and the States, the university actually assists you with that post-study work visa. So it's the university that helps you with that process. I mean, we can obviously put you in touch with the right person there to assist, but um, we don't physically do it ourselves, no. Uh, okay, there's some questions in the chat. I think you've done very well. <laughs> I, I, I'm hoping. I'm hoping I'm answering. No, you have. I mean, it's happy. like you've written a whole exam over there. But I think just to everybody, I see we've we've dropped off with quite a few because of the questions. I think most of them had their questions answered. Um, but just to understand that we have got people on campus. We have got the um, corporate head office. We have got direct access to global. So there are a number of avenues for everybody to reach out to if needed. Yes, if I haven't answered your questions, please, like you can contact Absolutely. us either through your or directly via email. Um, however, it is that you want to get a hold of us, we're here to, to support you, really. Absolutely. Um, Nico, I'm going to stop you over there. I see it's quarter two. Yes. Um, but thank you very, very much for taking the time this evening. Um, we look forward to the partnership moving forward. I know you're going to be part of the grade nine evenings across all our campuses. You're working alongside the counselors on all our campuses. And of course, you've got your global offices where students can actually contact you directly. So to you, to your team, um, again, I say welcome on board. Welcome to the family. We're really, really excited about, you know, the whole mantra of a world of opportunities and the fact that we now know more of what we never knew before. And to everybody who's on the call, we really, really appreciate you joining us on this call. I'm hoping you're as excited as we are about this because it, it really does open doors to opportunities we hadn't, hadn't considered before. So thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone. Um, and yeah, Nico, if you maybe, if we put our mics off and just leave the screen on for two minutes. So anyone who needs some information can um, grab that quickly off the screen. Or, as I say, they're quite welcome to contact their counsellors, their deputies, or myself Thank as Head of Academics for Crawford. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Tracy, And to all the parents that are still on, uh, thank you very much for, for listening to me talk. I'm sure I talked your ears off and you're ready to go and relax now. <laughs> um, but if, you, if you need anything, all of our details are here. Please feel Absolutely, free to Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And all right. Yes, support you. Absolutely. Thank you very, very much. And to everybody, thank you for joining us and have a good evening. Thank you. Good night, everyone.